first artist was profiled during our Visual Arts of South Asia Festival. Tanzina Amin is a Bangladeshi Canadian visual artist, teacher, curator, and energy worker with a background in architecture and design, as well as sourcing and quality assurance in the fashion industry. She is the co-founder of Artuseum, a trailblazer art gallery and an inclusive platform promoting artists and fostering networking for creatives. She has curated over 70 art exhibitions in Toronto, showcasing the works of over 700 artists. Tanzina shared with us how she started her art journey as a teenager and came back to it after 25 years in corporate roles. Yeah, so I started when I was a teenager, so that was way back in the 80s, and I uh, I, I used to just love sketching on my own. I used to love doing portraits and I was actually pretty good at it. <laughs> it. They looked like who I was sketching. So then I took some lessons. I went to a private art school for a couple of years um, and learned very traditional uh, oil paintings. And uh, that's how my art journey started. And then I started university and I took a 23 year break. I just got busy with life in general, studies, career, kids. And then in 2009, I was going through a rough patch in my life and uh, I was told that maybe I should go back to something I'm passionate about. And I really didn't even think I could paint anymore. I didn't think I even remembered. It was so long. So, But once I started painting again, it was like I had never stopped. So that was, that was really amazing. And uh, I just promised myself that no matter how busy I am, I'm never going to stop painting again. <laughs> Tanzina tells us about how her inspiration has continued to develop. I get my inspiration from nature in general, from anything around me, not necessarily only nature, but whenever I'm looking at something that really catches my eye, I, I'm always thinking about, hmm, this would make a really nice painting, or, <laughs> or I hear a word and I think that would be a great theme for something to do. So maybe I should start thinking about that. How would I express that word through it? Or, so I just take inspiration from all kinds of stuff going on around me, whether it's something I see on the computer or something I see when I'm outside and uh, or within my life in general. And I try to express them through my canvas. And uh, in, in my first phase of my art journey, when I said that I took lessons and it was very traditional realism styled oil painting versus when I started again, I find that now I'm more into expressionism styled painting. I don't want to paint things just the way I see them, just or let me rephrase that. I want to paint them the way I see them, not the way they look. So I want to put my personal expression in it. If it makes me happy, I'm going to put my favorite colors in it. Like my favorite color is red. You'll see a lot of my portraits have red right on the face or a lot of my paintings have a lot of reds and oranges and yellows, like warm colors. So I, I love to kind of express my, myself through my art. Tanzina's exposure to art growing up was limited, but she shares the pockets of influences she was exposed to over time. If I look at my earliest, earliest experience, because I grew up in Bangladesh, and uh, back in the 70s and early 80s, when there wasn't internet, there wasn't uh, cable TV, uh, my, um, my knowledge of all the artists in the world was 
a lot more limited to whatever books I could find. So I was more into all the masters and their very traditional um, landscapes and still lifes and portraits. Um, and then when I started university, we studied uh, art history. That's when I was really drawn to Van Gogh. It's just, again, that the fact that he was putting in a lot of his emotions into his art. So if someone was blonde, instead of just trying to get the perfect blonde hair, he was making it a bright yellow, it just exaggerating the colors, exaggerating the strokes, um, putting his emotions into uh, his art. So he was definitely one of my biggest, biggest influences um, towards the beginning of my art journey. In 2019, Tanzina left the corporate world to delve more into spirituality. She makes note to mention how her journey motivates her. Uh, I, my art has been going through different phases and it all kind of depends on what's going on in my life. So, like I said, I first started with that very realism phase and that's when I was learning. And I think that was really necessary to build the foundation. I learned to draw perfectly. I learned to really um, be able to represent or reproduce something that I see in a realistic manner. And then I went through the phase where I wanted to put in my own expressions in there. So I was still starting with the perfect drawings and then I was adding something else, something that expresses my own emotions. Now I'm going through more of a spiritual awakening phase, uh, if you will. Um, over the past couple of years, I, a lot has changed in my life following uh, a series of personal uh, events that uh, that led to what uh, you first said, that I was in the corporate world for so many years. And uh, then I just realized that my priorities were different. And um, I just left everything. I took a leap of faith and uh, I'm more into now a journey of self-discovery and self-compassion and grief and healing. And that's also influence, influencing my art right now. I'm now experimenting a lot more into how I can put these, uh, this um, spiritual growth and self-discovery into my art. So that's kind of the new phase that I'm going through at the moment. We get a deeper look into Tanzina's layered creative process. For me, a lot of time just staring at the canvas. <laughs> that would be the first step. Um, no, kidding aside, I I have a bunch of sketchbooks scattered kind of all over the place. I, I always carry one in my purse. I have one on the coffee table. I have uh, a bunch of them in my studio. So whenever I'm just sitting anywhere and something catches my eye and I think that, oh, this would be nice to kind of uh, put into an art, I start sketching. So that would always be my first step. I, I like to just do little thumbnail sketches or, or sometimes when I when something really catches my eye from the thumbnails, I'll make a bigger sketch and then I'll start to kind of think about it. So even before I start working on a canvas, I will spend hours or days or weeks just kind of brewing that thought and working on it and then I will sit with a canvas and I'll start. Um, sometimes I may just start with uh, the intention that this is just going to be an intuitive painting, not with any sketchbook or anything. I'll just keep on applying paint on canvas and see where it goes. And then there are other times where <clears throat> 
I will just um, start with a thought or a sketch or a theme that I have in mind and uh, and keep going at it. I like to paint in a lot of layers. So whatever I start with might not end up being the final artwork, but that's how I will start. And then I will keep going at it. I will keep building on it layer after layer. And um, <clears throat> a lot of times I, I will just kind of, um, I, when I hit a roadblock, when I'm in the middle of a painting and I don't know where else I want to go, I know it's not finished, I will just hang it on the wall or put it on an easel somewhere that I spend a lot of time. So for me, it's usually um, in the living room. That's where TV is and that's where I'll sit on the couch with my laptop when I'm working. So I, I have the painting facing me and I keep staring at it. Whenever I'm kind of uh, just sitting there, I'll just sit there and stare at the painting and it'll come to me what else is needed. So I, I build my work over weeks and sometimes months. And, uh, and I think that's, that's really important for me to uh, make sure that it's something that I really want it to be. I don't just kind of draw and color in, not that that's wrong or anything. This is just my process. I'll just keep on building layer over layer until I feel like, okay, now it's done. Tanzina has spent the last few years getting trained in meditation, self-compassion, grief, and healing. She has been certified as a Reiki master, is a coach for healing with the arts, and a palliative volunteer. She describes how her goals coming out of the pandemic are tied to the interconnection of art and healing. What I've learned as an artist versus what I'm learning now in uh, healing and grief and kind of combining it together um, to find ways to uh, also help others and also use my art to be a healing tool. So this is something that I'm kind of still working on and uh, it's still growing. I've uh, even started a separate brand other than my art. It's called the Purple Cup. So that's where I'm kind of going more into the healing and wellness part of what I'm doing. And I'm trying to combine art with wellness and holistic healing. If Tenzina were to put her work in a capsule and someone found it 50 years from now, she wants to share the emotion behind the work. Here's how she would like people to feel. I would say, I would, someone, I would want someone 50 years from now to look at my painting and say, hey, I would put that up on my wall. So in other words, I would like my painting to be timeless and also contemporary, if that makes any sense. <laughs> huge healing property which is why like 23 years later I used art to heal and get back into something that I was passionate about <laughs>